Hey everyone, this week I'm going to be showing you a way to transform your rotisserie chicken into something even better. This works with any rotisserie chicken, but I'll be using Costco in this case. This is a cheap way to make a delicious meal, so let's go. First things first is we're going to get all our vegetables cut up. I'll be dicing up three medium-sized onions and two poblano peppers. I feel like chili is a great way to practice your knife work because you'll be chopping a whole bunch of vegetables. Personally for me, I enjoy chopping and prepping veggies because these reps will be never wasted as you'll be constantly improving your knife skills. Life's all about them reps and this is no exception. I have a leftover carrot that I'll roughly chop and place into my pot. I'll explain its purpose later, but for now just chop it. Cut up some scallions for garnish in the end. Now I'm going to mince up around 7 cloves of garlic as well. And finally, the last thing we're going to add is some canned adobo chilies. These will add a massive depth of flavor into your chili on top of regular chili powder. I had a spice lover in my friend group, so I decided to add four, but feel free to adjust based on your personal spice tolerance. Now the next step is to prep our rotisserie chicken. We're going to try to separate the skin, bones, and meat. Just try your best. You don't have to go too crazy. But what I'm going to do with the bones is actually fortify the store-bought box stock. Roasted chicken has some flavor left in the bones and you might as well not waste it. With the meat, we'll shred it to have a more scoopable form for later on when we add it. Now I'm going to add the leftover juices in the container to my pot and my bones as well. We'll proceed to add in a whole box of chicken stock. Don't forget your bay leaf and then add in around 4 tablespoons of gelatin because store-bought stock lacks body that comes from hours of extracting the flavors from various bones and cartilage. If you don't have gelatin, feel free to just skip this step. Bring this up to a simmer and then let it simmer like this for 1 hour. When 1 hour has passed, strain your stock and reserve it on the side as we prepare to create our chili. I got my pot on medium heat with a bit of olive oil and now I'm going to cook my chicken skin. This will help crisp it up by rendering out its remaining fat and that's a good thing. We get crispy chicken skin as a topping and the fat imparts its flavor into our oil which basically makes our chili even more delicious. Skin feels and looks crispy enough, I take it out with a slotted spoon and place it on a paper towel to drain the excess oil. I will then start to saute my onions and poblano peppers and sweat them out. Remember to add some salt to draw moisture and this will help deglaze the fawn developed from the chicken skin. If you've been liking my cooking content, please leave a like and subscribe. It does help me out a bit, so let's get back to it. After the peppers and onions have been cooking for a bit, add some chili powder and some cumin as well. Continue to cook these vegetables until the onions turn translucent. Then we're going to drop in our garlic and chili peppers. Let this cook also for around 1-2 to two minutes or until fragrant. Then we can finally add in our 28 ounce can of crushed tomatoes. I also had a can of diced tomatoes lying around as well. And don't forget about our fortified box chicken stock. I'm going to bring this up to a simmer by covering it with a lid and I'm going to keep it here for 30 minutes to let the tomatoes cook to develop its flavor. Finally, to finish off our chili, I have some rinsed off black and kidney beans, a can of corn, and my shredded up rotisserie chicken. Feel free to substitute or add whatever you want. This was just meant as a way to potentially make your rotisserie chicken into a better end product. I'll give everything a good stir to heat back up the chicken for a couple minutes. Then I felt like it needed a bit of extra salt, so I added in some Worcestershire sauce as well. To serve, I like to scoop up some of the chili. Don't worry, this bowl wasn't dirty as it was just used to hold my chicken skin previously. And then once you have your bowl of chili, top it off with some crunchy crispy chicken skin and scallions. That's a great meal you have in your hands right there. I feel like this is definitely an exercise to make a pre-made ingredient, in this case the rotisserie chicken, and transform it into something even more delicious. So give it a try and let me know what you think. Hey everyone, thanks for watching my video and if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and follow my Instagram at WeekendCooks. Thanks for the support everyone.